everyone, it's Nicole and I'm here with a watercolor Wednesday and I am going to play with some paints today from Dilusions and some Dina Wakely paints and some uh, matte medium and some tissue paper from Tim Holtz, some stays on templates, inks, just going to get totally messy. This layout took me a better part of two hours. It was like an hour and 53 minutes. And most of that was doing the background. Once I was done the background, I was like, there is so much going on in this background. I do not want to cover it. So I put very minimal embellishments and I called it done. I just, I'm loving um, this layout. The first thing I did was I took a bunch of tissue paper from Tim Holtz and it's from different collections. They come, they lo almost look like um, the same box as wax paper and they come in a, you get a huge roll of tissue paper and I think it's like 12 or $13, but you'll have tissue paper for the rest of your life in there. And uh, some of them have uh, just text on it, like a book text, some music notes. Some other ones have different ephemeral looking things and uh, butterflies. And so he has all kinds of different ones. And sometimes he comes out with new ones at different CHA. I didn't notice this this time around he did, but there's at least four to six different ones out right now. And I have pretty much all of them and um, I love using them on mixed media layouts like this and sometimes it's fun too just to use on a regular layout as layers which I haven't done in a long time um, when you know you're, you've been scrapbooking for uh, a long time you go through phases where you use stuff a lot and then you kind of sort of get over it, you know, like, okay, I've, I've used that enough. And then you go with the new and the, the new stuff. And then uh, it's fun to go back and scrap with some things that maybe, you know, you haven't scrapped in a while. And I'll tell you, there was one product that I wanted to use on this layout and I had to wait for it to dry. And it's making a comeback, people. If you've been following me for a while, you know that about a year and a half, two years ago, um, I had done a challenge on my Facebook group where it said to use old products. And I had brought out these roll-on rub-ons. Um, I have quite a few different ones, and some of them were from Daisy D, which are not even around. And um, I had used them on several layouts and everybody was like, where did you get those rub-ons? And uh, they weren't available. While well, this new CHA, there's quite a few co collections that have announced that there's going to be roll-on rub-ons, including Chamel and Amy Tangerine and Dear Lizzie. And I meant to use it on this layout and I totally forgot because by the time everything dried and then I did... Um, you know, just my photos and stuff, I totally forgot, but I'm, I am going to use them in a layout coming real soon. So what I'm using to glue down the tissue paper uh, from Tim Holtz is I'm just using some matte medium, some gel medium, and I'm just putting it on the paper first, which by the way, I'm using watercolor paper because I wanted to make sure it was thicker so that it could take all the medium that I was going to put on. And then I put some over top and it kind of seals it on the page and I put it all over I just ripped it and put it here there and everywhere just so that um, it would create a background and the thing with mixed media layouts your background background layer on the finished layout you really have to take a look really closely to the layout to see those bottom layers but I tell you if that first layer wasn't there it would make a difference in the finished layout because it's subtle, but you can see it. So now, so to, to the first step that I did to sort of push back into the background, this uh, tissue paper is putting some white gesso all over the layout. And I'm, I'm um, just using a sponge and putting it on the layout that way. 
So that's going to take me a few minutes and uh, there's a couple of ways that I use to sort of push the background back is one by using gesso like that and I make sure not to use the clear one. I use the white gesso and then once I start putting layers of color when I want to push it back but I want it to be subtle I just use my Mr. Huey in white and I use that but you'll see that in a um, when we get to that spot. So now I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to dry it up and I have to tell you this usually I do my layouts in one sitting I or standing <laughs> I, I scrapbook standing up but I do it in one shot but with these types of layouts once you get to a spot you got so much ink on it you got so much uh, modeling paste and all that stuff you really need to walk away and just let everything air dry by itself and uh, come back to it another day so I think I did this part and then I came back to it a couple days later. Now I'm going to use a couple of colorings from uh, Shimmers and let me just reach for them. One of them is Oh Say Can You See and it is a colorings. And the other one is Heidi Ho Blue and it's also a coloring. So now I'm, I just taking the Heidi Ho Blue and I'm just taking a small template from my stash from Crafters Workshop and I'm spraying through it and then I flip it over and all that ink that's left on top I use it as a stamp and again just a different texture so one is a negative the other one's a positive and um, the one thing is with these mixed media layouts man my hands were covered in paint for days after <laughs> even though I scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed and um, it just gets everywhere plus um, what I did was I went to a certain spot and then I kind of walked away and went and washed all my my templates and everything so that they wouldn't get too uh, you know dirty so now I'm taking one of the dilutions paint in white and I'm using the Tim Holtz uh, Distress Tool with just a sponge. And I have to say, I probably could have went downstairs right away and washed those sponged out sponges out and maybe reused them. But I just chucked all of them out. And I'll just get more little re-inkers. Re because <laughs> at that point, I had done so much cleaning, so many templates and everything. I was just done. <laughs> So I, I also took some of my heavy body paint from Dina Wakely in a few colors and uh, I'm using different templates and what I did in my scrap room, this video is so long that I'll be able to talk about other stuff too. Usually I'm always trying to rush. Um, I'm trying to organize my scrap room even more than it is. I had a drawer that I had all my templates in. So I had all my 12 by 12, my 6 by 6, my Tim Holtz, my smaller ones. And I can tell you, every time I was digging for a template, I had to take everything out. It was quite a deep temp, uh, deep drawer, and it was really a pain. So what I did, I took two iris containers that I used to separate my kits. I put one that I just put the 12 by 12, and then another one that I put the rest of the templates in. And my goodness, what a difference that has made. I can go through now and find my templates so much easier. I'm hoping to be able to do a um, a tour of my craft room soon. I know I've been saying it for a while. There's just so many hours in a day, people. <laughs> I wish that I had more time to do everything that I wanted. I want to do, but the clock runs out on me too much, and. Uh, you know, between work and doing my YouTube videos and my classes and my son's hockey, it it kind of um, takes up all, all the hours of the day. So this is where I was saying, now I took this sort of spray looking template and I used my white um, ink, what's it called? Mr. Huey in Calico White and I'm almost out like I don't have much in there. I think I have a second one, but that's probably my favorite white. And um, I just put it over top and it really kind of pushes those colors to the back. And the more layers that you put on, you just put 
the other stuff more to the back with just a little bit peeking out and then you have all these wonderful colors um, coming together and um, the picture that I want to scrap today is a picture of Mason and it was on his mom's birthday a couple years ago and we had gone to Montana's and he was sitting across from me and then when he was decided that he was done eating he kind of slapped his hands together and he's he's bilingual so he speaks French and English and he said Tout fini and you can see he's starting to say that fini part <laughs> with his mouth and um so I'm going to put it in English, all done, and then in my journaling, I'm going to put uh, exactly what he said. Um, my scrapbook is mainly done in English, and uh, but I just put the in the journaling what he actually said. So now I also took some uh, light modeling paste. No, actually, I took my whip spackle because it was a little thicker, and... Um, I used another Tim Holtz template and added more texture. Now, another thing I could have done is I could have colored my uh, light modeling paste or the whip spackle and did that also. There's just so many possibilities. Um, for today, the two main things that I wanted to use up that I hadn't used very much of was the Dilutions paints and my heavy body paints from Dina Wakely. And um, so that was sort of my goal for this for this uh, when Watercolor Wednesday. Okay, so now I'm using more templates, just different shapes. I use some with alphas. I use some with um, uh, circles and wavy patterns and just using different types of um, patterns using the templates and that's just sort of my second layer my second and third layer because I'm using sprays and paint at this point to start building more and more color now I'm going to use different materials to create um, texture so this is just a placemat that I just got at the dollar store and cut it apart those cheapy one dollar placemat I just painted some paint over top and um, it just created a different texture on the layout and I'm gonna I try to dry it up as I go now I'm going to take some uh, stamps with some stays on ink and there's no rhyme or reason I'm just taking different little stamp sets and those all those little stamp sets are all from Kaiser Craft really affordable you can get them at Simon Says Stamp I don't know which ones they have still but they're only like $2.99 a piece and they're great for creating uh, texture on a background for a mixed media layout so if you're new to you know to trying out mixed media and you're thinking, wow, some of those stamps, which they can be the mixed media stamps, they can be super expensive. Um, but these little ones are perfect for someone that just wants to start out and not invest too much. You know, like $20, you could get 60, di 60 yeah, six different ones, uh, six different backgrounds. So some of my favorite are um, the rock one, the one that says memory, memory all over again. Now this one here, it kind of has like, Chinese uh, writing or I don't know if it's Chinese but Asian writing of some kind and I love that one too and I have another one that has kind of music notes I also have um, some of the roller stamps from Stampin' Up that uh, they used to I don't even know if they have those anymore but I have some of those that um, with patterns on them and I'm using that now I'm using that stencil again but with the green paint then I was like, hmm, I'm going to use the dauber the way it is and just make some circles on the layout just to add more texture. And um, so I just kind of stamped it three times just using my Tim Holtz tool. And now I'm putting some paint on a paintbrush and putting paint splatters. I'm just trying to put as much texture as I can. Okay, so uh, while I'm doing that, I'm just going to talk about some other stuff. Oh, there's the roller stamp that I was saying that's from Stampin' Up. That's super old and it has music notes on it. So I like to use it for mixed media. Um, 
so yes, I want to talk about some of the plans that I have. So I want to keep my YouTube channel to, I believe it's going to, it's going to stay at three days a week. I seem to be able to manage that a little bit more. And um, one thing that I talked about, I think it was back in September or October, I said that I wanted to do either a Periscope or a Google Hangout or something like that. And I wasn't able to because our internet connection is was super crappy. <laughs> and uh, we've since got a new modem and it seems to be a little, it's faster. See, the, the other one, it kept dropping the inc internet connection, so I would have been cut off every two minutes. So that wouldn't have been fun. Now, uh, we figured that out, so we got a new um, modem. So that's working out good. Now, the other problem that I had was um, I needed something so that I could stream. So I've um, ordered myself a webcam. So we just got the modem like... A week ago like it's not that long ago and we didn't even know we could we just we ended up with another problem and we called our uh, provider and uh, then they said oh by the way you qualify for um, you know this new modem and it'll give you um, unlimited internet which that was another problem because of all the uploading I do between my classes and YouTube um, one month our internet um, bill was like an extra $300 so it was like I can't stream for an, you know an hour or two and then that puts up our internet bill even more so um, now we have unlimited internet that's only happened like I said in the last week or so so beautiful and uh, so now after that I ordered the webcam it should be in any time and uh, so my plan is um, to start off with I'm going to do once a month that I'm going to stream live and I see that uh, Inky Quail Adele started doing that too so that's cool and um, like I said I had talked about doing that um, last September and I wasn't able to do it just because of our internet um, and a lot of pe other people do it too which is fun I remember when Noel Hyman used to do it and I was there every Tuesday night like I was just watching her live that was my favorite night of the week and I couldn't wait for her to go live and I just go and you know scrap with her and um, ever since she stopped doing it um, I just always wish somebody else had done that too and I've watched a few other people that do it too and um, so it, it's it's I'm hoping it's going to be a lot of fun and eventually in the future I'm hoping to do it once a week and then maybe one week work on project life stuff another week work on a regular layout another week work on um, a mixed media layout and so on and so forth just regular layouts and stuff like that so I think that that can be a lot of fun so that's my plans for the future uh, I'm hoping that my first live uh, Google Plus or uh, I keep saying Ustream because that's what the big thing was before but I think I'm going to do it on YouTube there's Google Hangout too and um, I, I'm hoping that it's going to be in February if we can figure everything out I'm hoping to do it in February but anyway back to the layout uh, I used the dauber again with the blue paint and added a few more uh, circles then I added some paint directly on my mat diluted it with water and then again used the paintbrush and just added some splatters for a ton of texture now this is the point that I said okay this is really really super like the modeling paste wasn't dried the ink splatters there was a ton of ink splatters so at one point here real soon I'm just going to put it away for I think it was like a day or two and then I come back to it but before I did that I thought you know what I want to cut this down and I want to mount it on a piece of cardstock so I went to my stash I found a deep navy one and then I found two different green ones those are all stamping up uh, cardstock except for the dark navy one and I decided on the brilliant blue one because it matches that paint um, the dilutions paint to a T I absolutely love it and uh, so that's what I'm going to end up mounting it now I'm just taking some bubble wrap I have um, 
a little baggie that I keep all mixed media stuff like that. And in a minute here, all you can see the sequin um, uh, strip to the side here. That's what they use to punch out sequins. And I'm going to use that to create texture if I haven't already. I think I did already. And this is where I walked away and I said, okay, let it dry for two days. And now I'm back. I'm going to mount the photo on that brilliant blue. That's a color that doesn't exist at Stampin' Up! anymore. And I was super sad because it was probably my favorite color. I use that blue so much. Well, first of all, the school that my the primary school that my kids went to that was one of their main colors so I use that color all the time all their um, school sports all their jerseys were that color so you know like I said that color was used a lot and when I found out that they were taking it away I actually got a you know a couple of packs of 20s to make sure I didn't run out um, so I just mounted the photo with the blue and then I'm going to end up putting some uh, tissue paper in behind just to lift it off the page a little bit. Now I look, I did look through some 6x6 six six pattern papers because I was trying to um, add a little bit more colors. I had four 6x6 six six that I kind of pulled from my stash and there was nothing there really that kind of sort of tickled my fancy. Nothing at all. And um, so I'm just going to keep it really simple. I'm just going to add a little bit of embellishments and I'm going to, you know, call it done because it was an hour and 53 minutes. And um, so anyway, we always talk about what TV shows are that we're watching. So I finished Burnt Notice. Absolutely loved it. Then Sarah, uh, for, uh, Sarah Swan here on YouTube mentioned Firefly and I remembered when Big Bang Theory they had mentioned it quite a few times it was kind of a I think it was more like a a diss towards it but it was enough that it intrigued me and I thought I want to watch that and then when she said that she absolutely loved it I decided to watch watch it and I watched the entire series plus I watched the movie which is called Serenity and it kind of wraps it all up and Sarah if you haven't watched the movie yet you need to it was really good sad but really good and now I'm watching this new one and because I have um, Turbo Flicks and you Canadians out there if you don't know about this you need to know about this you can add Turbo Flicks to your Netflix and you end up with all the American shows which ends up adding 5,000 shows to your list and it's a lot of shows that they got on their USA channels that we never had so it's awesome so anyway this new show that I'm watching it's called Leverage oh my goodness I love it there's like I don't know six seasons or something it sort of reminds me of um, sort of like burn notice because they're helping people I guess Phoebe, or not Phoebe, Fiona, thinking of friends here, Fiona was sort of a thief, right? But with leverage, uh, most of them are thieves, and then they decide to work for the good side and help people. Oh my goodness, it's absolutely uh, a super good show if you haven't watched it. If you add Turbo Flicks, which they have specials all the time, but uh, I paid like $30 for a year. And you can get all those extra shows and it's it's really, uh, really good shows. Now, I just took a few uh, die cut packs that I keep in these iris containers. And most of them I used was from the Jen Hadfield collection that I had received in one of my hip kits. And I'm just going to make three little embellishment clusters. I'm going to use one of the frames. I cut it in one quarter and or one third and two thirds and I end up using on two different clusters one of them I just put the little um, chipboard that says dream big and then I put a little squirrel in there it just reminds me of Mason's because he just goes all the time right the age right and then um, the top one I just took a tag and that's where I'm going to do the little bit of journaling that I do on this page I end up adding a flare and just an ampersand and um, and it's basically it's like saying and when 
And when you're done, you say loudly, tut fini, which means all done. And um, so that's going to be my journaling up there. And I like the way uh, I have the tag sort of tucked in beside that circle. And then the circle of the flare over top of all of that. And just as a reminder, in a few days, I'm hoping to release my third class, which is uh, going to be called Demystifying Clustering. And it's all going to be about talking about clusters and the kind of stuff that I sort of ha keep in mind and do when I put my clusters together. So uh, a lot of the videos are sort of real time and I talk about, um, you know, putting the cluster together and what I'm kind of thinking of and what I'm fighting with and I can't, um, and what I decide on in the end. And so the bottom cluster, I, like I said, I used the rest of that frame. I used a little mason jar because that's his little nickname. And then it says discover on there. And then I just tuck a tag under there just to kind of make that mason jar looks like it belongs. I'm going to add, um, and that's about it for that cluster. I'm going to come back and add just a few enamel dots in that um, brilliant blue color. And uh, I just found that that amp ampersand was sort of... Um, I don't know, kind of floating beside that circle. So I just added a little tab under there and it just kind of finalized the whole, you know, cluster. It just kind of grounded it. Now I'm going through my um, enamel dots and I found these here from Basic Gray and they're the perfect blue. And um, I could have put some green ones too, but I decided just to stick with the blue. Like I said, after two hours, uh, when I got to the clustering part, I didn't do too much because I wanted to make sure that the focus was on um, the background and how much time I had put in it. But I still think like he's sitting, you know, right in the middle of that page, sort of more to the right than the left. And um, his little t-shirt is in that green and the same color as the brilliant blue. So he really pops off the page and I'm going to take one quick last look and I'm looking for some stickers to do my little title here and I'm going to use these doodle bug they're called Tinsy type and I think these are called beetle black and I got mine at scrapbook generation and they have them in all the colors and they are awesome and they're not that expensive and you have a ton of letters and they fit perfectly on, you know, a regular scrapbook page, but they're also great for Project Life because they're just the perfect size for a three by four card. And one of my goals this year is to journal on the page as I'm doing it and to put the date so that's what I did here. Kind of mucked it up. I put October and it was actually September. So I end up putting the date September on the little mason jar there so that it would be, because uh, the other one was kind of blurry. <laughs> and um, so I just put it on the mason jar so you could really see it. I put his initials MJ on that little dream big. And here are a few close-ups. So if you're enjoying these videos, if you wouldn't mind, give me a thumbs up just to let YouTube know. And also, don't forget to hit subscribe. I upload three times a week. And I have over 535 videos uh, on YouTube. So thanks for watching. Bye.